Okay, hi everyone and welcome to our second episode of Navigating Omics Data Analysis Challenges in Biotech. Uh, in this episode, we'll be discussing Omics Data Analysis Challenges, as the title suggests, and the role of uh, AI specifically, and a bit of the future of bioinformatics. And for this discussion, I'm very happy to introduce you to our speakers today. Uh, one is Ivo Kui, uh, co-founder and CTO of Vigomics, and our guest speaker today, uh, Tommy Tang, which, who is uh, Director of Computational Biology at Immunitas. Uh, thank you both so much for being here. Uh, just a quick uh, few notes on today's interview. It will last 30 minutes, of which the last few minutes will be dedicated to your questions. So feel free to put them in the chat, uh, as you can see on the screen, and we will be reading, that, uh, reading those at the end of the interview. So. Uh, yeah, now without further ado, I will leave it up to our speakers today and Ivo, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Hello, Tommy. Um, I'm so looking forward to uh, talk with you this half an hour. Uh, Tommy is a uh, very known, I think, uh, active on the internet and well known in the forums and uh, on the social networks. Um, Tommy, you had, um, you had your undergraduate in China. I read you had your PhD and postdoc in University of Florida. You had research positions at um, institutes like MD Anderson, Harvard, uh, Dana Farber, and now recently you are director of computational biology at uh, Immunitas. So, yeah, I know you from the uh, yeah from the internet, social media. You're very active. Uh, so, how did that actually start? Okay. First of all, thank you, uh, Ivo, for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, speaking of how I started social media, and uh, then it went back to like maybe 10 years ago. I when, uh, when I started to learn uh, computational biology because I was trained in the wet lab during my PhD at the University of Florida. And then the other day, actually, I, I, saw, I read this blog post by uh, Stephen Turner, who uh, was the uh, bioinformatics director at the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the blog title is How to Stay Current uh, in Bioinformatics. How do you stay up to date? And I read the blog and and, it, and he actually suggested, okay, you need to be on Twitter and follow uh, bioinformaticians, professors, labs, and also papers, bioinformatics paper journals, and to see what are out there, right? And I was a beginner, I just want to learn. So yeah. I follow a bunch of them and I started to also kind of tweet, essentially just for myself because I was learning quite a bit from them and I was also sharing like my uh, learning journey on, on, on tweets and gradually it gained some traction, yeah. And and the other, uh, I, I mean, I think initially I was just posting for myself, then later when I become a little bit more experienced, I try to actually post uh, uh, valuable information for others because I went through the pain to learn and I want to other people well, I want other people to to avoid the pain that I, I went through yeah amazing and now people start following you instead of you following other people that's amazing yeah so so also the the, the change you made was you were always in kind of academia and recently in industry Correct. so what, what's the difference for you? Uh, uh, so I've been uh, in my current company for a little over two years now. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, for the past like over 10, 10 years, I was in academia. And really, it was probably a bit scary like, for me to make, to make the jump because I didn't know what to expect in the industry. Now that I have more than two years experience, I can speak a little bit about that. I think research-wise, we are doing very similar things. And uh, previously, I had this like... Uh, uh, assumption that okay, it, like, we don't do probably as good research in company, but in fact, I can I can tell like oh, uh, the e science in in the company in our company is, is great, and the the biologists they are doing great uh, experiment, great science, mm -hmm. and I also got to do like interesting science as well. So I think that's the similarity I think between um, academia and, the and, and the differences will be like I think in Industry is more about teamwork and it's about collaboration. Yeah. I yeah. think because I've been in academia and I, I mean, one of the main things for academia is to publish papers, right? You hear publish or perish. And uh, for all those papers, you will be this, okay, you won't want to be this like leading 
first order, right? This paper is mine. Okay, I'm I'm yeah. I'm going to own this whole thing, right? But in in biotech or in, in pharma, like our we have a, a common goal, which is to develop a, a drug yeah. to help patients. So it really it requires us to actually collaborate with each other, work closely with each other, and uh, there's no such an okay. Yeah. I'm the leading author of, of this yeah. thing. Yeah, so it's a teamwork. Yeah, and you enjoy that. Yeah. Yes. So the question is, I want to go away. So you, so you were a wet lab scientist, you said, and you you changed to computational biology. So um, wh why was this decision? Um, what made you yeah. do this? <laughs> so for like four years into my PhD, I like my advisor asked me to analyze this public available chip sequencing data, and it was just too big for me to open it in in Excel, it crashed it and I, I kind of was forced to learn <laughs> uh, data analysis. And it's usually like I, I said this before, you have two reasons to do anything. One is that you want to stay away from the pain. So, and second is you really love it, right? I think initially I just want to stay away from the pain because I couldn't do it myself and I had to beg other people to do it for me and, and it's not their priority. So I had I decided okay let me just learn by myself and and then of course gradually like I I mean as I actually master all those uh, skills and I, I love it and then it becomes part of my my passion so yeah so so you didn't have any programming experience before that and no zero <laughs> oh, zero but maybe that's also probably gives some of the, uh, the audience a little bit inspiration because I, I mean, four years yeah. into my PhD, I, I had zero actually yeah. uh, experience, and I just started to like learn things on on, on like uh, Coursera, uh, edX, uh, uh, Udacity, all those like uh, um, platforms. At that time, it was just just the beginning, and uh, I learned quite a bit on that, and read books and Google a lot. I think it's a lot of work, but the um, self-taught, self yeah. Self -taught. yeah. Yeah. So, but do, do you think this kind of skills like programming should be part of the modern biology curriculum taught? Okay, at, let, at, yeah, let me get to this before. Uh, uh, yes, I, I self, I could taught myself, but then again, the, uh, the postdoc um, uh, at MD Anderson Cancer Center, that was a computational biology postdoc, really, I kind of, um, refine my own skill during my PhD a little bit, get ready for my uh, jump as a computational biology postdoc. Um, of course, I, I in the lab, of, uh, there are like other good colleagues and you can learn from. So uh, I think um, mm -hmm. you, you always need someone actually who, who are more advanced than you and to teach you. I think that um, I was lucky in that yeah. sense. And, and for, your, for, your, for your question, okay, I think everybody, at least need to know certain levels of data analysis skills. You don't have to be like an expert, right? For example, in biology, like, right? You mean, in, yeah. In bio yeah, yeah, yeah. So because nowadays if there's a paper actually published uh, some time ago saying all biology is computational biology because if you if you because the advantage the 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 advance of the technology is like is so fast and it generates so much data no matter which uh, sub area you are in. And when you have so such big data, and you need to at least have some data analysis mm -hmm. skills to to kind of play with them, you know, get some insight from them, and that will actually really speed up your um, uh, uh, your research. But of course, if you are definitely like you hate <laughs> data analysis, yeah. make sure you find a good collaborator, right? Like even before you you do the experiments, yeah. like. Uh, uh, talk with the uh, the bioinformatician for good experimental design, and work closely with them and uh, communicate with them, and that's also an alternative solution, right? Yeah, I, I guess the the molecular the techniques like the NGS, uh, I think high throughput sequencing and molecular biology in general, they transform biology in in more data science, right? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or data yeah. science. So Correct. so. I wonder who who do you think is better to interpret the data, the biologist or the bioinformatician? Like, so it's always a, a teamwork. I think we both 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 uh, parties need to work closely with each other. At least in at in Unitas, 
uh, we have a computational biology team. We do like new target identification. We do like a mechanism of action, like uh, uh, and the data data analysis to find those. And we sit actually just next to each other. So when we have the data, mm. we're, we're analyzing also RNAs and also TCI and some spatial data. So when when we are analyzing the data, we always even just turn around to to the web biologist. To, okay, we 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 found this thing interesting. Like. Do you think it's it's making sense? They may tell you, oh, this is probably just artifact, something like that. And then if it's really interesting, they will guide you, okay, please like dig into this cell type a little bit like uh, deeper and, and see what you can find. Now we kind of learn from each yeah. other because we, we have different expertise, we can do computation and they have the uh, immunology uh, knowledge that we can also learn from. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so you li really sit together. That that's that's cool. Yeah, in, in yeah. the same room. Yeah. Correct. Okay, cool. So, so you 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 start learning to program, and so you 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 make your own scripts and maybe little shiny apps. Um, so you you like making, let's say, solutions yourself, scripting yourself, or do you also um, use, let's say? commercial software like ours? Yeah, um, so I think uh, there's different challenges, I think, at least for bioinformatics. What, uh, the ma major challenge is for me is metadata. Or, mm -hmm. So metadata is data that describe data. Like, uh, for example, like <laughs> we, we are interested in like single cell RNA sequencing data, like immunotherapy related. And then the metadata usually will be buried into the supplementary files uh, in the spreadsheet. And usually the spreadsheet is usually is not filled out like following the best practice. And uh, we have to actually read the paper, understand what's going on and kind of tidy, or tidy up that um, spreadsheet as well. So, so actually most of our work is, like, is, is on that and really the, the, the the data analysis, the real analysis or the modeling only accounts for a small amount of time, right? So yeah, you're saying true. whether I prefer doing it myself or so, uh, commercial solutions, right? I I think there, there are things that the commercial solutions, they, they are really good at, right? For example, I think the platform like yours, like if it's a, a like well-defined experiment, like for like bulk only sequencing data, and the web biologists can actually unlock their power to play with their data using a platform such, yours, such as yours. But then for those public data, they're notorious, uh, uh, known as like very messy and we, so messy, yeah. we have to actually do, do the yeah. hard work, the dirty work and make it ready for, uh, for further analysis. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. The metadata is often so messy, so dirty and, and most of the time, it's just uh, yeah, pre-processing or cleaning the data, right? Like, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, are there any uh, yeah um, communication problems that you kind of uh, experience between biologists and bioinformaticians? Um, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a very good question. Uh, because for me, actually, I had I have the advantage because I was yeah, trained, you know both. I was trained yeah. like uh, you know wet lab. I did all those like pipetting thing, right? So I kind of understand. I mean, their question, yeah, what, they are, what what they are doing, how they are generating the data. I mean, I, I generate data by, by myself, and I really appreciate it. it's really hard to generate the highest input data. So I can understand them. And of course, I also understand how tedious it is sometimes and you know, how challenging it is yeah. for data analysis. So I have like sympathy on both sides and I can also communicate like uh, with both sides and okay, I know what kind of question they want to ask, what exactly they, they want to see. Mm. And uh, at least for me, I, I don't have such uh, communication problems, but I know if you are, for example, you've trained as a pure computer scientist, and if you want to actually uh, uh, work closely with uh, a wet wet biologist, there's a lot uh, 
things to learn. Like, to even learn, yeah. even just language wise, they use the same terms, yeah. like meaning different different things. So it can be challenging. But uh, I, I I think uh, the computational biologist or the the computer scientist they need to have some background of biology. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So okay. So I think let's say um, the big data transformed um, biology and the computational biologists they, uh, they uh, came as a new role um, or a stronger role in this. Uh, I, I just want to ask now about the future with all this development of AI. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems AI is also um, going into bioinformatics. Um, what what do you think the role of AI will be in, in let's say, computational biology, omics, data analysis? Yeah, even before I talk about AI, even <laughs> AI is like a kind of a, a yeah, really big term for that. But uh, like, just I'm seeing actually probably uh, the two trends uh, for for bioinformatics, right? So uh, at least for bioinformaticians like us. There are two trends that I'm seeing. Oh, the first thing is for computation uh, you know, if infrastructure, right? There, there will be a platform for just routine data pre-processing, right? From the raw data, like for example, if it's data uh, sequencing data from raw mm. fastq to like count metrics, all this stuff, right? And at Emiritas, we use Google Cloud, but setting up uh, all those um, organizations, security, choose the right type of machines can be a little bit challenging and can, can be time consuming because all these documents um, uh, like you have to find the right docu documentation and, and, and it sometimes can be time consuming. And you will see like platforms such as Latch Bio or Watchshed and Deep Origin, they are trying to solve that. And also I'm a big fan of uh, reproducible computing. So <clears throat> the future platform can provide vision, version control for both the code and the data. And the other trend for, for buying from magicians like this, the data infrastructure, right? I wish all the public data are harmonized oh, and they're ready for analysis of machine learning. That's a company such as BioTouring, the Lucy data, they're <laughs> trying to solve that. And I really, I hope there's a marriage between those two so we can really focus on data analysis and ask you know, interesting biological questions. But unfortunately, yeah. most of our time still uh, is spent, spent on wrangling the data. And for bioinformatics, uh, bioinformatics, the future for web biologists, okay, for example, platform like yours, you no. Know, or PPR bioscience, and I'm, I'm, I'm full disclosure, I'm uh, on their scientific advisory board. They can actually de democratize some routine analysis for web biologists, right? So they can yeah. unlock, unlock their power to interact with data and derive biological insights. And we know a large language models, like it's advancing so fast. And then there's also companies such as BioNL, and you can es essentially talk to the model, okay, by typing text, okay. And then they will perform data analysis yeah. for you. For example, okay, tell me the gene expression across cancer types in TCG, and it will generate a figure for you, right? Yeah. Of course, for more customized analysis, we still need to uh, do it, and that's also why we keep keep our job. And in yeah. terms of yeah, uh, then I can talk about AI. Like, do you have any? Yeah, yeah, like the Chat GPT. How how could that revolutionize, right? Uh, bioinformatics or biology? Yeah, the one example I gave is that okay, the, the web biologists can just talk, right? Yeah, I want exactly. I want to do and and then it can give you some 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 data, right? But but it can also give you code, right? I, I saw recently, like you just asked, oh, I want to forget about it. It gives the code to, to Yeah, do. yes. That's actually I actually have used it, but sometimes oh, yeah? you still need to understand the code because sometimes it gives you the wrong code. And yeah. I was actually uh, asking for the steep learning code in R. Uh, and it actually gave me some code actually embedded like with Python code. So you will be, you need to be able to, to, to read it. But even before we talk about AI, like it may sound a bit cliche, but for any AI model to perform, they should uh, have good data to train on. The model is as good as the data that are trained on, right? Sure, and, I still, sure. and I still think metadata is greater than the model itself. Uh -huh. And the quality and the quantity of the data needs to be improved. And you see, like my LinkedIn headline will say, "Transform life science with data." I, I didn't say Trans transform life science with AI yet. Yeah. So, but that being said, AI models can help to, for example, integrate mm -hmm. different um, uh, omics data types, right? For example, single cell or multi omics. You can 
integrated RNA, uh, quantity accessibility, protein abundance. And you can use deep learning uh, new, uh, neural networks, right? But however, I always prefer like simple method, first of all, just regression, random forest. Those are my favorites. They're easy to use and uh, interpret. And, and, and random forest still beats beat, uh, actually neural networks for, for tabular data. Like for most of the companies, yeah, yeah, yeah. tabular data is still the king, right? And you, you were asking about the large language model chat GPT, right? Yes. You can also actually apply large language models on, for example, single cell data analysis. They are those like foundation uh, models, um, uh, such as like GeneFormer or SCGPT. So instead of using this word as a token, you can use a gene as a token, right? And, uh, gene and, name. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but some recent benchmark shows that their performance is not as good as uh, task specific holistic uh, methods for downstream batch correction, cell annotation, and silicon perturbation prediction. Yeah. yeah. But even just for integration, I will start with simple like statistical method, for example, multi omics factor analysis or MOFA, it's a good, it's a good oh, okay. starting point, right? It's just a conventional matrix factorization. So I always I prefer simple yeah. methods first. Yeah. Simple, yeah. Yeah, because they're more understandable, right? Not like mm -hmm. a black box. Um, Correct. So so as, as, let's say, high throughput technologies made the computational biologists, let's say, uh, more important. I was wondering in the future with the AI. I mean, I mean the chat GPT, where where even the biologists can ask the code. Maybe in the future even better, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or even say, okay, interpret. Will will there be a new kind of biologist coming um, um, appearing? Or yeah. I I think first of all, I mean the same thing. I want to repeat, like we want to actually make a change for the data first in terms of like yeah. standardize the data generation and the injection, metadata annotation, and all the stuff, right? Like you you, yeah. you, you, you need to actually first standardize those. Yeah. And uh, then at the same time, like uh, learn advanced like machine learning methods such as deep learning like by watching online videos, reading books. And then you get ready, right, to apply them when the data is ready, right? So, and you were asking, with the advance of all this, like chat GPT, all those things, whether it is a new type of a biologist. <laughs> yeah, I still see, I think definitely what that democratize, you know, the, yeah. the, the data analysis, right? For even for web biology without any um, programming skills. Uh, Just again, the system, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you still it's good to also at least understand at a high level, like I mean, even the method what it's doing, and and you need to also make sure those models don't give you like a wrong answer, like because one of the problem is hallucination for for those large language models, and you will be able to if you know at least the basics. I mean, you you will you, you can you can uh, spot okay the mistakes maybe, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. These language models, they, yeah, they. they give you very plausible uh, answers but uh, yeah what you say the hallucination you have to verify it right and, yeah. Uh, yeah, in science in biology we, re we really need to be sure that the answers are right correct. or the code right what you said yes. also yeah even if the code is there it needs to be correct yeah, right right to... okay yeah yeah interesting interesting uh, developments I'm, I'm really when i saw the Chat GTP, uh, I was really amazed and uh, yeah, yeah, how intelligent to look at. And, and I, I saw also, yeah, people, what you said, yeah, putting in a table into Chat GTP and asking, okay, please interpret this. Uh, so yeah, 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 there are there actually uh, uh, tools that are specific, uh, specifically designed for code generation, right? For example, GitHub has, has this co-pilot thing. I believe some like software companies they also have, Train specifically their model on on the code base, for example, like on, on Stack Overflow or on like GitHub or the code, and that will probably give you a much better uh, uh, code <laughs> because they they are trained like specifically. Oh, that's actually another thing I want to mention is that you need to have like domain specific knowledge or the data that you are trained on should be like domain specific because usually it will give you like better results, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Okay, very nice. Uh, maybe as a last point, uh, maybe you can tell us uh, on what channels you have your uh, social network. So you are you're very much using Twitter, right? Or X yes. now. Yeah. You have recently started your YouTube channel also. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I started my YouTube like channel uh, April, and I'm committed to make at least one one video uh, every week. So uh, in my videos, I will share some tips of bioinformatics data analysis, and share my my experience, my journey, my tips, and uh, I just hope it's useful for other people who want to actually take the same route as I am, and. Uh, yeah, I also hope that I can serve uh, as an example that you can do anything. Like if you put in efforts and yeah. if you take enough time doing the basic things consistently for 10 years, <laughs> yeah. you'll be good. <laughs> but, and then you, you, you're you also very active in LinkedIn and Facebook, not so much, right? No. Uh, no. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, great, yeah. Good. I think we are, I, I will interrupt you too. I think we are also approaching uh, the last minutes of our talk today. Um, I see a comment, a, a last minute comment coming in from uh, Niels, who is saying, I think this is a really cool example of how to leverage chat GPT for gene variance analysis. And he's giving an example. So if anyone wants to visit, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on that, Tommy? No, actually, I actually don't know this one. I will check it out. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Lils. Um, yeah. If um, if you have any other comments uh, that you would like to share with Tommy and Evo, or if you have any other questions that just come up uh, in your mind after the webinar itself, uh, you can, of course, uh, comment down below and we will also reply uh, soon after the event. Uh, we're always active and Tommy especially is very active on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, so we're always there to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, I guess thanks again, Tommy, for joining us today. It was really great to hear uh, your experience. I was about to wrap up, but I see another question coming from the audience. So I will revert back and just read it one last time. Um, mm -hmm. I see, aside from the data preparation and processing you mentioned, what would be your biggest challenge in your current data analysis process? Okay. Uh, that, that's a great question. Uh, so I talked about like a metadata curation. So the other challenge, not necessary, not, I think it's also for us, is uh, quick turn around, turn around between the, the, the web biologist and the computational biologist. Because usually when we, uh, after we do some analysis, we give them the results, or they will find something or they will come back to us. Okay, Tommy, can you do something else? Change this parameter a little bit and, and also use a different color and see how it looks like. <laughs> and I mean, we can do those, right? But then it just, takes time, right? It's also like tedious, like not, not that creative work. So I think uh, uh, and a platform like yours, okay, it can fully actually free our time for, the, for us. So the web biologists, they can play with data by themselves. And really when they have like specific, really customized analysis, and then we can help. I think um, definitely uh, we, the platform like yours can, can, can speed up that, that process. Yeah. 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 As uh, as you mentioned, Tommy, uh, I will just give some more background information. At Bigomics, we we support biotech and pharma teams uh, in their omics data analysis. And as Tommy mentioned, we have a platform that is highly interactive and user friendly um, uh, to use. And it's both for transcriptomics and proteomics data. So if you wish to have uh, more information of that, of course, you can visit our website, bigomics.ch. Uh, or contact uh, me or Evo uh, today, and we'll provide you with more information on that. Uh, I guess, again, thanks again so much, Tommy, for being here, yeah, for taking the time Tommy. to meet us. We know you're busy. <laughs> and thank you, thank you to all of our audience that is uh, has joined us today. And make sure to follow us here on LinkedIn, as well as Tommy. And uh, I guess thank you all, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you. me. Bye. Bye. Thanks.